G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So today I thought I'd do a little bit of an in-depth species profile again for you guys. Uh, normally I'd obviously do them on my cichlids. However, today I'm going to do one a little bit differently and it's going to be on my albino bristlenose uh, catfish pair. So about uh, a couple months ago, I think it was uh, February, uh, just before the lockdown, I bought an adult pair of um, bristlenose. I wasn't sure if they were a breed pair. Uh, wasn't, they, they weren't sold that way. Uh, they were just sold as an adult pair. And uh, within a month, they had spawned for me. So I was very lucky with that. And since then, they've spawned four times. So I've got a lot of fry, and I feel comfortable enough now to be able to pass on the knowledge that I've gained in breeding these guys uh, to you guys. So um, let's get straight into it, and I'll show you what I do. Bristlenose catfish come from South America and are found throughout the Amazon River. They make great algae eaters and are an easy fish to care for. And as such, they are great for beginners and make great fish for a community tank. They are common in the aquarium hobby, but most of all, they're really easy to breed and they are always in demand from aquarium stores. These guys are pretty hardy and can tolerate a wide range of water parameters, mainly because they have been bred in tank race conditions for, for years now. They can tolerate a wide temperature range from around 17 degrees Celsius, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, to about 27 degrees Celsius, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pH from uh, around 6.5 up to around 8. But mine are kept at around 24 to 25 degrees. And for my bristlenose, I don't do anything special with my water. It comes out of the tap at around a pH of 7.2 to 7.4 and is soft. Uh, pretty much the only thing I do to my water is add prime to just to dechlorinate it. In terms of a tank size for these guys, I'm currently breeding them in a 100 litre aquarium, which is on the smaller side for them. As they are constantly eating, uh, they are always pooping, uh, so a larger tank would be better for them. But if you just keep up your water changes, you should be fine. Stock your tank with lots of driftwood so they have places to hide. This also supplies them with a food supply, but they don't actually eat the wood. They more kind of rasp on it, which does break off small pieces and in turn helps them digest their food. The driftwood also supplies them with more structures for algae and other microorganisms to grow on. You can also supply them with Indian almond leaves, which is also a great food source. As the leaves take weeks to break down, it is a great food for the fry to feed on 24 seven, as well as the biofilm that develops on them. They eat that as well. Like all my fish, I feed these guys a wide range of foods just to ensure they are getting a wide range of vitamins and minerals they need to stay healthy. And this includes broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, cucumber, sweet potato, pumpkin, carrots, and peas, as well as algae wafers to supplement their veggie diet. For protein, I've been feeding mine mysa shrimp and uh, the homemade food I made, which is some white flesh fish and prawns. You could watch that video right here. They go crazy for that stuff. I aim to feed up to about 80% veggies and 20% protein. They are mainly nocturnal and prefer a darker aquarium with lots of hiding spaces. I hardly ever have their tank light on for them, so they feel less stressed and more inclined to breed. The males can grow to around 15 centimeters, which is six inches, with females a little bit smaller than that, but it takes a couple of years for them to reach this size. Depending where you read, you can expect these guys to live anywhere from between five to 15 years. Sexing is fairly straightforward, and usually once the fish are around six to nine months old, the males will start to grow the bristles on their nose, which they are named after. The actual name for these bristles is odontodes. They can grow really long on males, and as you can see how they are on my male, they are huge. But for some males, they won't grow as long. Some very mature females will also grow them, but they are very short and will only be around their mouth, so not so much on the top of their nose. Also, once females reach sexual maturity, they will get very big round bellies as they are starting to produce eggs. If you want to breed them, you can start off by buying three or more bristle nose so you can better your chances of getting both sexes and letting them grow up together. Now, once you have sexually mature adults, you shouldn't have to do much work to get them to breed. Just supply them with a cave that is big enough to fit the male as well as the female like you see here. It should be a fairly tight fit for both to fit in. These caves are great, and once I put that cave in the tank, my male went straight into it, and within a fortnight, I had my first spawn. But for what they are, these caves aren't exactly cheap. 
Terracotta flower pots cut in half make good caves, or even just cutting a hole in the side of the pot will also make a good cave. Ensure you don't make the hole too large though. A good reference to go for in terms of the size of the hole to make is for it to be a tight fit so that if the male doesn't want the female to enter the cave, he is able to block the entrance with his body. Another good alternative to the expensive caves are lengths of PVC. Again, make sure they are the right diameter for your male to fit snugly in them and cap off one end. Other alternatives are bamboo tubes and even coconut shells. These can look great in an aquarium, especially if you're into growing plants and grow java moss and anubias on them. I recommend that if you want to get these guys to breed, do large water changes with cooler water. In the wild, they breed during the rainy season, and doing a large water change with cooler water can trigger them to breed. This is because that when it rains, rivers flood, and they know that there will be more food available for their fry to eat. I run my tank bare bottom, because I believe it makes cleaning up all the poop from the adults and fry so much easier. But because the tank is bare bottom, try to have a black base for the tank, again to try to keep things dark. If you only have white styrofoam on the base with a bare bottom tank, then you can try to paint the bottom of the outside of the tank black. If you don't have black paint, alternative is to put some sort of dark colored cloth over the styrofoam and sit the tank on that. Usually my pair won't come near each other at all, except when it's time to spawn which at the moment is pretty much every two weeks. This also happens to be the same amount of time that the male has to raise the previous lot of fry from eggs to the free swimming stage. He really hardly gets a break. With my pair, I notice the female will approach the male's cave. She will attempt to get into the cave to spawn with him. And during this time, he will do his best not to let her in. It's pretty funny to watch, but she will persist and eventually she will get into the cave with him following in behind her. Depending on the female's condition, age and size, she can lay up to 200 eggs. My female isn't laying anywhere near that though, and is probably laying close to about 100 eggs in each clutch. Once the male fertilizes the eggs, he will kick the female out of the cave and care for the eggs for approximately two weeks, which is about the time it takes for the fry to completely absorb their yolk sacs. My female generally stays away from the male this entire time and basically sits under the driftwood, only appearing to eat or to spawn with the male. Bristle nose prefer some circulation, not too strong and not too slow. So medium circulation, which is what you can see here with my double headed XY2822 sponge filters. This amount of circulation also helps the male circulate water around the eggs, which are usually deposited right at the deep end of the cave. Now, sometimes the male, and this happens especially with the younger inexperienced males, will kick the eggs out of the cave sometimes the entire clutch, sometimes just a handful. This can happen if you have one male and sometimes two females, and the second female wants to spawn with the male when he already has a clutch of eggs and he is inexperienced. If this happens, you can save the clutch by placing them in a fry saver tank and adding an air stone near the clutch of eggs, just to ensure they are getting a good constant flow of water over the eggs. Keep the air stone going until the fry have hatched and completely absorb their yolk sac. Once the yolk sac has completely been absorbed, you can begin feeding them some food and soon after, let them return to the main tank with their older siblings. Sometimes the females will breed like clockwork, say every two to four weeks, depending on how long it takes her to produce a next clutch of eggs. While on the other hand, some females won't breed regularly and it can be hit and miss. It really is the luck of the draw with them sometimes. Experienced males won't let the female in the cave if he thinks she might harm the current brood. This is why it is important to have the hole in your cave or pot big enough for the male to fit through, yet small enough that he can block it with his body. This can sometimes be a problem if you have one male and two or more females to that male. And having two females in a tank that is my size, 100 litres, will definitely stress the male out. That said, experienced males are able to look after more than one brood at the same time. However, it can also put undue stress on your male if it keeps happening. So just ensure he isn't getting overworked. If he is, you can pull either him or the female out to give them a bit of a break from spawning. I also wouldn't put two adult males in a tank that is my size, so 100 litres. Not saying that it can't be done, but I wouldn't do it as the males can fight and stress each other out and the amount of poop from all those fish in the tank this size would be a bit much. To grow the fry fast, do frequent water changes. At the moment, I'm doing 70 to 80% water changes every three to four days, 
but you could increase this to daily water changes if you have the time and really want to get the max growth rate out of your fry. They are big poopers and really they never stop eating. So if you can supply them with a constant food source, say Indian almond leaves and some boiled veggies every morning, plus daily water changes, your bristlenose catfish will grow super fast. Just make sure you are siphoning out as much poop as you can see with each water change. And do your best not to suck up any fry. Did I mention do frequent water changes to grow the fry fast? The largest fry you see here were born at the beginning of March 2020 and it's now the start of May 2020. So they are about just over two months old and some are already pushing four to five centimeters. I'm going to start to move the largest fry out of this tank soon into a larger grow out tank, which will in turn make more room in this tank for more fry as the fry that recently hatched are my fourth batch. So there you have it guys, my in-depth species profile on bristlenose catfish. Really hope you found that video entertaining and informative. If you did, please hit the like, comment and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. I actually do want the coins to hit me in the head. Like, how dumb is that? Give me a like for going the extra mile just for a little sheer bit. It's gonna last like literally not even two seconds. Like, honestly, there's a lot of 50 cent coins here. They hurt, they got sharp edges. Oh, I'm out of focus, aren't I? Because I'm focused on the bed. So those edges look smooth to you. All right, right in the face. <laughs>